Dexter Smith and shit. Yeah. Coyote King, right here. Yeah. Three hat. Yeah, I like it over here because because of my job at Walmart. Yeah, this is pushing cart. I go to work at 11, 11 to three this morning. Yeah, yeah, there's uh, there's two job coach. Yeah, he take me to work and then he pick me up, they take me back over here. Sometimes we go to Albuquerque, sometimes we go to uh, like um, PBR, National Fund, Rodeo, and Pow Wow, all that stuff. Sometimes we do. I'm the job developer, and then his job coach is Teresa. Sometimes she has to take care of crew in the morning, and then sometimes I run him to work. So he's a real good work. Been there 10 years, own career, and 401k and whatnot. He knows his job real good, and really prompt on getting there on time. Oh, it's time to go. I gotta get there before a certain time. So. Justin, Justin Harden, he's 26 years old. And Sean Harden, he's 23 years old. He has several policy. He's mostly in his wheelchair. He can move his hands and legs and arms and stuff. And he understands his whole surrounding. Everything that's being said is just him acknowledging what his wants and needs are. But he still does it anyway by his different tones. He was painting with his cousin. And this is the, the one with the ribbon. It's the one that he won the best of show in first place at San Juan County. And uh, that's kind of what started off his painting. So he was all happy about that, <laughs> all excited. And then from there, that's kind of like what started his painting and taking art classes in high school. It was part of um, his graduation plan. And then from there, they started their business and getting their business cards. And, they're set up to sell. You like to sell your paintings, huh? Oh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, he was able to take all the art classes the, for the regular ed students. So he was able to take art one and art two. And the last year when he graduated in 2012, um, we, we, I gave um, business cards to the teacher to give to all the students in the classroom and they were all impressed. They were like, oh my gosh, you're not even graduating yet. You haven't graduated yet and you already got a business going. <laughs> Right. So they're like, I gotta do something too. So he kind of like motivated the other students. You know, I had to kind of step back and take a look at, you know, Justin and Sean and what they liked. Mm -hmm. And then kind of uh, research, um, going to different agencies, asking, mm -hmm. you know, what's available. We got support through Center for Development Disabilities in Albuquerque. And so they had a little project called Project Ristra and they helped them do the plan it was called a path we did one for sean sean he has down syndrome he did the digital photography in high school he did digital photography one and then computer class the yearbook class so what he was learning earlier that day he was when he got home after school, he was working on it in his room. He'll take pictures when we're traveling. He does a lot of the, the skies and the scenery. And he likes to take pictures when we do walks or different areas where we're traveling or if we're up in the mountains.
I was born in, and raised in Chinle, Arizona. The disability I have is um, retinitis pigmentosa. As that, I was diagnosed when I was nine. See, I moved off the reservation when I was um, 22 or 23 in 1999. I moved off because there was no resources here on the reservation for um, blind blindness. I mean, yeah, there was voc rehab, but there wasn't um, a center for the blind where I could learn Braille or learn how to use the computer or the phone. I went to school at um, Phoenix College, started there, and then transferred to Apollo College and got my degree in, in software engineering. I started working for Arizona Industries for the Blind, and I worked there for five and a half years. So I walked to the Volk Rehab, and that's when I, when I asked them, I was, I was like, I want to go to school and have this visual impairment, and I get SSI, and can you guys help me? And they agreed that I need to go back to school. So I started again at Phoenix College. They paid for my apartment and my school. So I'll be starting with Western Michigan University. All classes are online except for I have to be there for six weeks. So I went from computer science to psychology at ASU. I have a, a software engineering degree. I have an AA degree and I have an a ATI assistive technology instructor certificate. And, um, and a, also a psychology degree, a bachelor in psychology that hopefully one day I'll be making a lot of money. <laughs> There's a teacher of division impaired who lives in Dolores, Colorado, who comes out to the reservation, she comes to, to different parts of the reservation, but she'll call me during the school year and say, um, I have a student, can you come work with, with them for me? Just because he, go, he goes blind, he, does, he doesn't have to just stay home, he doesn't have to just sit around. That There's a lot of things blind people can do. There's blind people that work for NASA. There's blind people that are mechanics. There's blind people that are, that are doctors, I mean, there's a blind doctor in, I don't know what state, but he does um, audio, um, cardiology, but he does, uh, like, he listens to the heart. The one thing that I am glad that, that my parents have done is that um, they didn't baby me. They didn't, um, they didn't like, um, coddle me. They didn't keep me inside and say, oh, you don't go outside, you're going to get hurt, or don't do this, or don't do that. They've always treated me normally and... As, as normal as they, as they could. And I think that's helped a lot, helped a lot with the way I am as a, now that I'm older. I think it's helped me to become more independent and be more um, advocate for myself a lot easier. For, as you know, um, a lot of um, Navajos are reserved. They don't speak out or they don't, um, they're kind of shy, they're kind of quiet. Yeah. And they don't um they don't want to push the limit and as a person with a disability, um you have to push those limits. You have to like get your voice out there and to make a difference. Yazi King. I like the park because um, you know it represents the um, the veterans, the co talkers, and my son and my daughter. They're Marine Corps, so I think that's pretty cool. My husband is also a veteran with the Air Force, so that makes me the Supreme Commander. <laughs> so we have uh, we do a ride. A um, it starts in May, at the end of May, from California all the way to um, D.C., and it's Run for the Wall. Motorcycles, a group of motorcycles, and it's, well, it's not a group, it's about 100 plus, and um, they used to come here. 
Currently, I um, serve as a vocational rehabilitation counselor for the state of New Mexico DVR program, and I'm located in the Gallup office. I was two, so I don't remember it, but I had a, um, I was in a car accident, so I have a spinal cord injury, a low level spinal cord injury. There's no pain, That's it's good. just I have crutches for balance right. and moving a little bit faster. My father was a medicine man, so he didn't speak any, any English, um, and I'm the youngest in my family. I also am the one who happens to have the disability. But my, it was my father who really encouraged me to, um, to look at education as the way to be able to care for myself. And he kept saying, which means really learn, go to school, go to school. And of course, when you're a kid, you think, oh yeah, that's dad, you know, why listen to him? Unfortunately, he passed away, and I think that's when I realized that, hey, you know, um, if I'm going to do this, I have to do it, you know, alone to a certain degree. I have to learn to be independent. Um, I don't think I, at that point, I know I didn't want to um, rely on other agencies, Social Security or whatever. Going up to my senior year in high school, I started plotting my getaway. So I looked for schools. Um, undergraduate schools that were far from the reservation that I knew nothing about but that were small enough not universities but really small colleges so I found one in Danville Virginia didn't know where it was but it was far <laughs> again the main message is that yeah you have a disability but just set a goal and work as hard as you can and reach that goal you know, your child then can get into a job with all these other benefits and, um, you know, work like anyone else and have money and be able to do the things that they want to do. CAP is the Client's Assistance Program, and so if, um, if a client comes to DVR and they have some problems, they think that they are having and accessing the program, maybe the counselor isn't returning their calls, for some reason there's miscommunication or whatever, then the client has the right to call CAP. They then can come in and meet with the counselor and try to work something out, whatever those issues may be, and then hopefully the relationship will go on from there. In addition to the Client Assistance Program, the CAP program, we also have another program called PABS, which is to assist individuals who are receiving Social Security benefits return to work. Um, which can sometimes be challenging in our community because the overall unemployment rate for individuals even without disabilities is so high. And so I think that sometimes individuals, once they receive Social Security benefits, because it's such a long process and it's so difficult, once they receive those benefits, um, I think they're hesitant to put them at jeopardy. I think, yeah, it can be scary. You know, you have been receiving financial aid all this long, and all of a sudden it stops. You know, you know what happens? Yeah. And I think it's really the family who depends on that, not only for, you know, buying food and groceries and paying bills, but it gives them a, um, um, you know, a financial status that um, they might not have if, if they no longer get that. But it's, I think it's just important that people who are receiving Social Security benefits also consider employment options and it, at least make informed decisions um, on what they can do and what opportunities they have to at least try employment. Um, for instance, there's a trial work period um, where you can continue to receive benefits um, while you um, are working so that it's not an all or nothing. Uh, situation so you still have that income while you're trying to work. Once we decide that a student or an individual is ready for work then we explain the Ticket to Work program f with them and that ticket then helps them to access additional resources 
after their case has been closed with DVR. And again, it's a good resource and it's a way to move them from Social Security in a gradual way and then actually, you know, maybe three years, two years from now, then their, their, um, their benefits are starting to get cut. Maybe not all at once, but in a gradual way. So they can feel more comfortable in moving from being independent on this to now going into employment. I think my message would be is for how, no matter how old you are, is try to get into school try to get some education because that is really the key. Once you get that, then, you know, you can volunteer, get um, some programs started. Um, network is always a great thing. With a lot of my jobs, they were fun. I got a, to do a lot of different things, but then I realized, okay, I'm gonna retire. I need some <laughs> retirement benefits. So I came to DVR. <laughs> <laughs>
they they tell me that and i was like well you can still go and you can still try it out because it's i mean yeah it is a tough world but you know um just keep going and just keep trying and i'm pretty sure that once you get there you can actually thank yourself that you actually accomplish it and in my mind it's like it's still a happy life in me By Loma, Nahapi Richard Davis, Bahanyan Matsuwa, Epkita, Germany, Epkita, England, Nikyang, Kowalpi Housing. And a station manager here at KUI, I hope you radio. And I've been a guest in this community since 2009. A community radio station reflects the talent of all its community members. We had had a, a sighted, um, a, a person with issue with his vision, DJing regularly as well. Um, so we had precedence, um, and I, I wanted to be fair and, and equal. And more than that, when there's someone with talent, we would be foolish not to bring them on. And there's no difference between a so-called normal person or a normal volunteer or a differently abled volunteer or a differently abled person. In this community in which I'm a guest of, that you're just human. You're, you have many traits and many talents. And the goal is for us to use those to the best of our abilities so we can all be of benefit to each other. And that all businesses and private organizations should demand of themselves the ability to look and find out where they have openings where people can be of assistance. And we don't think it's anything special. We think this is how things should be. Around 1972, when I was a young age of 22, I lost my vision in a matter of two weeks. I'm legally blind. Uh, my name is Charlotte. I work here forever, like 15 years. <laughs> um, I pick him up um, down in Shiprock, where he lives. It's one of the lanes there. Um, he's close to me, so we agreed, you know, that I can pick him up and bring him into Farmington to the law center. 
um, I bring him in to work. I just let him get comfortable and do his stuff, and then later he'll give me a call, and I'll log him in to his computer because he needs help there. He has a reader program that he does a lot of his recording to. He just does all, all that stuff himself. I think he knows a lot of people in the community, and he knows who to contact to get things um, going. Based on loss of, of vision, then, uh, you know, I just uh, decided, well, what do I want to do? You know, what's, what's the best avenue for me? But, uh, but I've always been interested in helping people. So that's why I, I went to school at Brigham Young University, and then I got my degree in sociology. And, uh, but what, what I was, when I went to uh, BYU, uh, they had a program, a sociology program, where you could do internships. I decided to do an internship with the uh, New Mexico Commission for the Blind and then the New Mexico Vocational Rehabilitation Program here in Farmington. But I was doing an internship here in Farmington, so they called me about two months before I graduated and offered me a job with the Navajo Nation as a VR counselor. And so I told them, well, I haven't graduated yet. They said, well, that's okay. Uh, you've, got, you've got the training. You're graduating here a couple of months now. So just come in and uh, sign your papers, your employment papers. So even before I graduated, I was employed by the Navajo Nation as a VR counselor. I guess to me, he's encouraging me because um, he does, he really does a lot on his own. And um, when somebody has that kind of thought about people that has, that are disabled, I can always tell them, you know, um, Hey, he, he, you know, he has a um, visual impairment, but, you know, there's things he can do that we can't do. People with uh, different kinds of disabilities, you know, they, <clears throat> some of them struggle a lot. Some of them never get past acceptance of a disability. When I was going through times where I was in depression, even suicidal thoughts, alcoholism, all these things, you know, because um, you feel like you're being punished to some degree. You don't understand it. You don't, I don't know what's really going on with you, with, with your situation and why you're, you're experiencing this. But <clears throat> I think um, what helped me was my cultural ways. One time I was having ceremony and, uh, and the medicine man told me, he said, your mom helping you, your dad's helping you, your brothers and sisters and your wife, everybody's supporting you. But we I can only do so much for you. So you're the one that's going to have to make up your mind as to what you want to do. My wife and I were on food stamps. We had a son that was only a little over a year, year, a year old. And my wife was working, but just barely making ends meet. And I decided, well, you know, I've had two years of college behind me. I decided <clears throat> I'm going to go back to college and get a degree and be self-sufficient and take care of my family. Where do you want to be next year by this time? Don't let the, the disability become a barrier. You know, accept that. Say, it's me. And put into your heart and your mind. It's me. Now I have to go forward with it. And things will come out positive no matter. I guarantee it. I've seen it happen time and time again. Thank you.